Okay, let's do this again. This is the second time I'm doing this video. But, uh, yeah. This is the grumpy old gentleman on film. It's a marathon. And we're putting a, a kibosh to piss uh, to Ryan Chataway's 24-hour marathon. And King James has started this marathon. So uh, I'm going to talk about the two movies that uh, Harry gave me. He gave me North to Alaska. Gave me North to Alaska to watch. So it's uh, Sam McCord. McCord, yeah, which is John Wayne, right? And George Pratt was his Granger, Stuart Granger, hit the mother load. George asked Sam to go to Seattle, Seattle, yeah, Seattle, and fetch his sweetheart, Janie. But she has already married someone else. Determined to bring George a new love, Sam invites a saloon dancer, Kobashin, back to know him as Jenny's replacement. All right, so John Wayne ends up in uh, Seattle, right? And he goes to this house. It's a big, friggin' gigantic mansion, right? And he's saying, whoa, that's pretty pretty big, right? That man, she lives in a friggin' mansion. So he goes and knocks on the door. The butler answers. He asks for her, right, Jenny? Anyway, he takes the butler, takes her out, him out to the kitchen. Jenny's a maid. She's a friggin' maid. So he tells her, right? Mom, I'm taking you back, right? She goes, no, 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 she can't go. And he goes, why not? He, she goes, because I'm married. And Wayne's character, right, McCord, I think it is, yeah, Sam goes, you're married? Yeah, she's married to the butler, <laughs> to, the, to the French butler. Anyway, that puts the kibosh on that, so he doesn't know what to do. He's got all this stuff, he bought clothes and bloomers and everything, right? But uh, anyway, he ends up in the saloon, right, in the dance hall saloon. And he meets up with uh, another dancer lady there, right? And uh, her name's, I uh, uh, forget her name. What's her name? Uh, the Sloan dancer. Anyway, that's Copachine. Copachine, Copachine. She's a nice looking actress, a lady. She's pretty good. Anyway, uh, John Wayne ends up taking her to <coughs> picnics and things like that. But a anyway, there's a mistaken thing going on here. She thinks that uh, he's she's he's taking her back for himself, but he gets there and it's not right. It's for Stuart Granger's character. It's a fun movie. There's a little brawl, you know, fights and in the in the bars and stuff like that. And and what's his name's character? He's a correct uh, Ernie Kovacs, right? He rips people off and stuff, and you know, steals stuff and plays uh, cards, right? And deals on the top of the deck. But yeah, so it's a it's a, well, uh, it's another love story, but uh, yeah, you don't, well, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen until you've seen the end of it. Because I can't, uh, uh, what's that word? I can't uh, spoil it for you. I don't want to spoil it for you. But it's a John Wayne movie. I haven't seen this one in years, really. I mean, I got a lot of John Wayne movies, but you know, it's every once in a while I watch a John Wayne movie. But Harry knows I like John Wayne, so he picked this up for me. So thanks, Harry. I really haven't seen this in years. And I bought this in 2006, in February 2006, yeah. So I, I don't think I went to the show and seen this one. I think I was kind of young. I was only nine, so my mother wouldn't let me go to the show then. But John Wayne, yeah, north to Alaska. And the thing is about this movie also, it has a guy in it with one name, Fabian. Right? He was pretty big in 1960. He had a few hit records on the radio and the girls loved him and all that stuff. So he had a good year, but after that he kind of, I don't know, disappeared, I guess. But anyway, that's North to Alaska. That was fun. A fun movie. And the other one he gave me was uh, the Iger Sanchin, right? Yeah. And that's from, uh, what year was that from? Nineteen seventy-five. Yeah, Clint Eastwood and George Kennedy. This is another very good movie. Anyway, Clint Eastwood's a teacher in universities. Uh, teaches art. I guess he teaches art, right? So he's an art teacher. And where he gets out, right? He has to go see this dragon guy, which is a 
I don't know, CIA, CIA or an FBI or some kind of shit disturber. But uh, somebody's been killed, right? One of the agents has been killed. And Clint Eastwood has to go and kill one of their agents or kill whoever killed this agent. He swallowed the, some microfilm, right? There's a dirty war going on and it's all about this poison gas or something going on and they got the recipe for it and they have to get it back and anyway stuff like that so Clint Eastwood heads off and goes and kills these two guys right so he gets back he says I'm done I'm retired they want him to do another mission right and that has to he has to go to climb a mountain right yeah he has to go climb a mountain which he used to do when he was younger but now he's a little bit older he's like 35 or something like that right so he's old but George Kennedy puts him through the the motions of you know climbing mountains and getting him in shape right so he can climb this mountain and find out which one of the three guys that he's climbing the mountain with is the guy that killed you know killed the other the other agents to, to have this uh, poison recipe that everybody wants but I really can't tell you too much about the ending, I'll spoil the movie for you. But it, it, but the scenes, right? The scenes that uh, where they're climbing the mountain, this great big goddamn mountain, right? Clint Eastwood, he's directed this thing, right? And he's also climbing up the freak. That's him climbing up the mountain and swinging along the ropes and you know pounding the nails into the side of the 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 mountain and stuff like that. And he's doing all that on his own, right? Yeah. Not, not you know, somebody else. That's really Clint Eastwood climbing these friggin' mountains, right? So, yeah, it's really it's a really good movie. But I can't tell you the ending of it because I don't want to spoil it for you. But, yeah, that's in this here. Uh, it's got uh, three discs in it. It's got Play Misty For Me, The Iger Sanction, and Coogan's Bluff. Oh, yeah, sorry. And The Beguiled. Sorry, that's four movies, right? See, it's got the slip. So got the slip disc. Slip disc. That sounds like a sore back, don't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Iger Sanction. Climbing. And there's some pretty looking girls sitting around a swimming pool, too. Drinking beer. Yeah. But there, there's more, too. Of course, there's more, too, the Iger Sanction than <clears throat> what I just said, right? But, like I said, you got to watch the movie. But it's a very good movie, and I haven't watched this one either in... A few years, although I've seen it before, right? Of course. But uh, so, thank you very much, Harry, and thank you, uh, the grumpy old gentleman on film, right? So that was all very interesting. So yeah, fuck you, Ryan Chataway. All right, boys, girls, talk to you later. Stay safe. <laughs>